Hello and welcome. You're watching Rajat Sabha TV. This is Breakfast News. I'm Rajat Kane. Let's have a look at the top headlines. GST Council raises hopes of rolling out new tax regime from July this year. Approves state GST and union territory GST bills to be sent to the cabinet for approval. Uttarakhand BJP Legislative Party meet today to choose next Chief Minister of the State, swearing in to take place tomorrow on the March 18th. Election Commission dismisses Mayawati and Arvind Kejriwal's claims of reliabilities of the EVMs, assures machines are fully tamper-proof as ever. India takes up strongly the matter of missing Sufi clerics with Pakistan. Two clerics including head priest of New Delhi's Nizamuddin Dargha missing from Lahore. And US President pledges to appeal to the Supreme Court for his revised travel ban. Two federal judges had halted the ban calling it fundamentally flawed. The Uttarakhand BJP Legislative Party would hold a meeting in Dehradun today in the presence of party central observers to discuss on who should be the new Chief Minister of the state. The Legislative Party meeting will be held at 3 p.m. in the presence of the central observers Narendra Tomar and Sarvosh Pandey and party in charge of Uttarakhand Affairs Shyam Jaju. The elected leaders will take oath as Chief Minister in a ceremony which will be attended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and BJP Chief Amit Shah tomorrow. The BJP scored a massive victory in the recently held assembly elections, winning 57 out of 70 seats. Now, the drama over government formation in Goa ended on Thursday with Manohar Parikar winning the trust vote in the assembly. Congress was left with just 16 votes against 22 in the favor of the BJP led government. For the Congress, its MLA Vishwajit Rane walked out of the assembly during the flow of test, bringing down votes against BJP-led government to 16. Rane then quit the party and also did not rule out the option of joining the BJP. The NCP's Churchill Alamau also voted in the favour of the BJP government on the floor. NCP has sent him a show cause notice. Newly sworn in Chief Minister Manohar Parikar won the trust vote with 22 MLAs in the 40-member House against 16 votes in favour of the Congress. It was a thumping victory for Parikar who quit as Defence Minister to return to Goa. Addressing the media, Parikar took a dig at Congress's Goa in charge, Digvijay Singh. As promised, we had a support of 23. We proved it on the floor of the House, debunking the Digvijay's claim that they have numbers. Right from beginning they did not have number and uh, it was only hype possibly because there was a demand which was coming that DGJ stepped down as a general secretary and as a desk in charge. This happens when you come to Goa only to enjoy, not to work. The BJP's tally was swelled with the support of one MLA of the NCP and three MLAs each from the MGP, the Goa Forward Party and Independents. The Congress faced further embarrassment when their MLA Viswajit Rane skipped the trust vote. Rane resigned from the party a few hours later. Before the floor test, he expressed his disillusionment but said that he will vote for the Congress. No, I am not. I never dished the Congress. Okay. I stood with the Congress. Okay. As of now, I am with the Congress. As of now, what does As that mean? As of now, I am with the Congress. I am going to be with the Congress. But I am disillusioned. I, I have expressed my views, but I am going to vote with the Congress. The rest of the Congress MLA said that they will stand by their party. But are you happy sitting in the position? Yes, definitely. He is a senior politician. He knows how to act. Digvijay Singh. He properly Singh. He was. He was. He wanted to put order in systematically. The Congress has termed the BJP's governments in Goa and Manipur a conspiracy. ये जो साजिश करके हुकूमत बना रहे हैं और वो गद्दी पे बैठने की जो उनकी कोशिश थी उसमें वो कामयाब हो गए हैं एक देश डेमोक्रेसी के तरफ नहीं जा रहा है मोदी जी डिक्टेटरशिप के तरफ लेके जा रहे हैं और उसका उदाहरण यही है गोवा और मणिपुर 
On Thursday, Parikar was sworn in as the Goa Chief Minister for the fourth time along with nine ministers. This was after the Supreme Court refused the Congress petition for a stay on his swearing in. The apex court ordered an immediate trust vote since the BJP finished second in the assembly elections. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. The Captain Amrinder Singh, who took over Chief Minister of Punjab on Thursday, would hold charge of Home Affairs and some other departments. Senior Minister Braham Mohindra has been allotted the Health Ministry. Navjot Singh Sidhu has been given the Local Government Department, Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Archives and Museum. Ex-Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal's nephew Manpreet Singh Badal is a new Finance Minister of Punjab. On the advice of recommendation of Chief Minister Amrinder Singh, after swearing in, the Punjab Governor VP Singh Badnor allotted portfolios to the newly inducted ministers. I, Amarinda Singh, do swear in the name of God. That I After leading the Congress to an emphatic electoral victory in Punjab, Captain Amarinda Singh was sworn in as the 26th Chief Minister of the state on Thursday. Nine ministers, including Navjot Singh Sidhu, also took oath. The ceremony was attended by a host of political leaders, including the former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, and Party Vice President Rahul Gandhi. Besides Sidhu, a strange nephew of former Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal, Manpreet Singh Badal was also sworn in. Punjab ki janta se Punjab mein har ek vyakti ko bahut bahut dil se dhanyawad. Unhone Congress party mein bharosa kiya hai aur Amrinder Singh ji ko Chief Minister banaya hai. Dil se Amrinder Singh ji aur hum sab Punjab ke liye kaam karein. मैं समझता हूं कि अमरिंदर जी अगले पांच साल में पंजाब को उस स्थिति में ले जाएंगे ले, जाएं, ले जाएंगे जो आज तक कभी नहीं हुई क्योंकि जो वित्तीय हालत है जो कालियों ने वित्तीय हालत इस, इस प्रदेश की की है उसको सामने रखते हुए बहुत काम करने हैं और मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि अमरिंदर जी इसमें खड़े उतरेंगे दरअसल जो माफिया खड़े हो गए हैं पंजाब में चाहे वो रेत का है चाहे बजरी का है चाहे केबल का है चाहे ट्रांसपोर्ट का है चाहे लिकर का है ये जो माफिया हैं, इन माफिया और इनको तो कांग्रेस पार्टी की सरकार काट के रख देगी। This is Amrinder's second stint as Chief Minister of Punjab. In what he claimed was his last election, Amrinder won the Patiala seat by over 50,000 votes, even though he lost the Lambi seat to former Chief Minister and Shiromani Akali Dal Chief Prakash Singh Badal. Congress, under the leadership of Amrinder Singh, won 77 seats in the 117-member assembly in the elections held last month. While the Aam Aadmi Party came a distant second with 20 seats, the SAD-BJP alliance was relegated to the third spot, which is 18 seats. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, dismissing the claims of BSP Chief Mayawati and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal about the reliability of the electronic voting machines, the Election Commission of India has assured that the EVMs are fully tamper-proof as ever. In a strongly worded statement, the Commission said baseless, speculative and wild allegations are being made, which deserves to be rejected. The poll panel said it did not receive specific complaints or concrete material from the political parties and candidates about alleged tampering of the EVMs during recently held elections in the five states. It said the BSP's representation on the EVM tampering was without any specific allegation. The AC's rebuttal came a day after Mayawati said she will move court against the alleged tampering of the EVMs. Kejriwal too had alleged that EVMs may have been tampered with in Punjab. Meanwhile, turning down Kejriwal's proposal for ballot voting in the MCD elections, which are to be held on 22nd April, Lieutenant Governor of Delhi, Anil Bejal, has confirmed the use of EVMs. He has conveyed to the Delhi government that rules will have to be amended for shunning the EVMs and it was not possible to make changes as a little over a month is now left for the polls. This is not the first time some parties are raising uh, doubts about uh, EVMs or uh, uh, speaking about tampering of EVMs. In the past also such doubts were raised. In future also such doubts can be raised. So we will have to settle it uh, through some credible uh, uh, way. We have to say that we have to say that tempering is not possible. But we have to say that if we have to say that 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 we have to say उसकी प्रक्रिया है उसको आ, पर विश्वास पूरा होना चाहिए जनता को सभी वर्ग को 
तो उसको रूल आउट कराने में क्या हर्जा है The GST Council on Thursday paved the way for rolling out new tax regime from July by approving the state GST and the Union Territory GST bills. Chairman of the Council and Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said the supporting GST laws will now be taken up in the cabinet meeting after which it will be tabled in parliament for its approval. The panel in its last meeting had approved the final draft of the central GST and the integrated GST laws. Jaitley said the model GST law will have a clause to enable the buy of up to 40% tax 20% by the central and the state each however the effective tax rates will be kept at previously approved levels of 5% 12% 18% and the 28% the panel also capped proposed sets on aerated drinks and luxury automobiles at 15% and 290% on the cigarettes the next meeting of the council will take will take place on 31st march for framing of rules for the goods and services tax regime the council now has granted its formal approval to all the five legislations that is the tgst igst sgst compensation and the utgst law so all these laws now stand approved first instance these laws under the constitution amendment approved by the cabinet by the gst council will now be taken to the cabinet and after the cabinet's formal approval they will be taken into news with the lok sabha we'll try and do that expeditiously time for a very short break more news on the other side The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Pipravā in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. is also called the bronze era extensive collection from the era shows the indus artists were not only well versed in techniques of metallurgy but also innovations in dance and performing arts this is best seen in the famous mohan jodaro relay the indus dancing girl No less impressive is the man drawing a bullock cart depicting agriculture activities. Bronze elephants on the other hand show domesticated animals used for transport. Welcome back. A setting ambitious targets the government on Thursday unveiled the national health policy presented by Union Health Minister J P Nadda the policy entails raising of public expenditure to 2.5% of the GDP from the current level of 1.5% providing free medicines and the health care and introducing yoga and much and much more widely in schools and working places sir i would like to sir a lot of coming after 15 years the new national health policy is aimed at not only providing basic health care but also to treat modern day lifestyle diseases stating this health minister jp nadda claimed that along with treatment and cure the policy looks at prevention of disease 
Accordingly, the health policy aims at increasing life expectancy to 70 years from 67.5 years, reducing under-5 mortality to 23 by 2025, reducing infant mortality rate to 28 by 2019, bringing down neonatal mortality to 16, stillbirth rate to single digits by 2025, eliminating leprosy by 2018, Kala Azar by 2017 and lymphatic filariasis by 2017 prevention of diseases and promotion of good health through cross-sectoral action, access to technology, developing human resources, encouraging medical pluralism, building the knowledge base required for better health, financial protection strategies and regulation and progressive assurance for health. The policy proposes to raise public health expenditure to 2.5% of the GDP in a time-bound manner from under 2% at present. It also looks to empower patients by setting up tribunals to help them seek grievance redressal over treatment. The policy has its center the person who seeks the needs of medical care. The policy advocates development of cadre of mid-level service providers, nurse practitioners, public health cadre to improve availability of appropriate health human resources. The Union Cabinet cleared the policy on Wednesday. The draft policy received 5,000 suggestions from the public, many of which were incorporated after discussions. Panchanan Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. During the National Health Policy approved by the Union Cabinet on Wednesday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has described the policy as a futuristic document which places interest on the citizens foremost. Praising new health policy, industry chambers, CI, said that it will prove to be a game changer. The policy was unveiled in the parliament by Union Health Minister J.P. Nadda on Thursday. The new policy eyes to provide a show health services to all with, it, with its free drug, diagnostic and emergency care services in all public hospitals. It also sets ambitious targets of likes of raising public expenditure on health care 2.5% of GDP from the current level of 1.5%. Two Indian clerics, including the head of head priest of New Delhi's Nizamuddin Darga, have gone missing in Pakistan, prompting India to take up the matter with Pakistani government. According to officials in New Delhi, Asif Nizami, the chief priest, and Nazim Nizami had gone to visit famous Data Darbar shrine in Lahore and were to catch a flight from there to Karachi. The matter was being taken up with the Pakistan government both in New Delhi as well as through Indian mission in Islamabad. Exchanges between the clerics of Nizamuddin Darga and Data Darbar are regular tradition. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday said the countries and state, su state supporting groups violating definition of terrorism should be punished by the international community. Addressing the counter-terrorism conference, in New Delhi, the Home Minister emphasized on the need to work together to ensure safety and protection of maritime domains and trade and economic activities through the sea routes. He also said programs on terror in Indian Ocean region should not be limited to statements and there was a need of strong mechanism in ensuring constant flow of information among friendly countries. <laughs> ऐसे देश जो लगातार सक्रिय रूप से ऐसे समूहों को समर्थन दे रहे हैं ये उन प्रायोजित कर रहे हैं यूनियन यूनाइटेड नेशंस द्वारा स्वीकार किए गए इस कंप्रेहेंसिव डेफिनेशन की परिज में भी लाया जाना चाहिए। अलग अलग व्हाट एल्स इस मेकिंग न्यूज़ अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन नेशन वाइड Former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Panir Selvam, who also leads rebel faction of the ADMK, has fielded E. Madhu Sudhanam from Radhakrishna Nagar in upcoming bipoles. Madhu Sudhanam was pre president, presidium chairman of the ADMK before General Secretary Sasikalan Atrajan removed him from the post. Meanwhile, ADMK Deputy General Secretary TTV Dinakaran will also contest from the same constituency on April 12th. The seat was declared vacant after death of former Chief Minister J. Jayalalitha. The Delhi High Court on Thursday asked Comptroller and Auditor General to conduct an audit in the number of trees felled for various projects and disposal of the timber by the government authorities. The High Court also asked the CAG to file a report on 
onto amount received by various agencies including the MCD, CPWD, NHAI for cutting of trees for various projects since 2010. The court asked where the timber from the cut trees had gone and why compensatory forestation was not, was not done. The court was hearing the issue of depleting forest cover in Delhi leading to increased air pollution. And several awareness activities will be carried out under Namami Ganga plan of the central government's national mission for clean Ganga from Tuesday at carts along the Ganga. The activities will stress on the need to keep the river clean. Centre for Environment Education, which is the nodal agency appointed by the NMCG, kick-started its Ganga cleanliness come an awareness drive program under the aegis of Varanasi Municipal Corporation. The program is being carried out simultaneously in various cities across five states including UP, Uttarakhand, Bihar, Jharkhand and West Bengal. In the latest development to the ongoing tussle between the Madhesi community leaders and the Nepal Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahel, the United Democratic Madhesi Front leaders have withdrawn from the government. The agitating Madhesis had on Thursday rejected Prime Minister Pushpamal Dehel's proposal to participate in Nepal's local polls and launched fre fresh agitation. The government has decided to hold local body polls on May 14th despite failure to reach an agreement with the alliance of Madhesi community-based parties. They pulled out from the government after accusing it of failing to meet a seven-day ultimatum to fulfill its demand that included no endorsement of revised constitution amendment bill. A Senate Intelligence Community commu Committee has rejected U.S. President Donald Trump's wide wrapping claims. The committee said there were no indications that Trump Tower was under surveillance by the U.S. government before or after the elections. Trump had claimed in his Twitter post 4th March that Obama administration tapped his phones during the 2016 presidential campaign. House Speaker Paul Ryan on Thursday backed key lawmakers' commi committee statement. But the White House, while refusing to accept report, said Trump maintains his claims, adding that investigation by the House and Senate Intelligence Committee may not have yielded all relevant information yet. The White House has yet to provide any evidence of the President's claims and instead has asked the Congress to examine white app allegations as part of wider investigation into alleged Russian interference in last year's election process. Uh, the intelligence committees, in their continuing, widening, ongoing investigation of all things Russia, uh, got to the bottom, at least so far, with respect to our intelligence community that, that no such wiretap existed. You Does your the president still stand no, by the first allegation? of all, he stands by it, but again, you're mischaracterizing what happened today. No, the they, Senate, they no, no, the I know, no, no, the, the, exactly the, from their I understand that. And the, the, at the same time, they acknowledge that they have not been in, in contact with the Department of Justice. So the President said last night that he will be providing, that there will be additional information coming forward. He's, there's a ton of media reports out there that indicate that something was going on during the 26th election. And I... Now, U.S. President Donald Trump has pledged to appeal to the Supreme Court to fight for his revised travel ban. The developments come after his revised travel ban was halted by two different federal judges, that of Hawaii and Maryland, in recent days. Trump's second executive order aimed at temporarily suspending travel from six Muslim-majority countries and entry of all refugees. However, judge ruled the order was issued the purpose to disfavor a particular religion. The stay was issued a day before the order was to get into an effect striking massive blow to the president. It's noteworthy that Trump signed a new travel ban 6th March in a bid to overcome legal problems with his January executive order, which caused chaos at the airports and sparked massive protests across the country before a Washington judge stopped his enforcement in the February. But the U.S. president continues to stress the ban is needed for national security and has vowed to take the case as far as it needs to go. At least 42 people have been killed and dozen more injured in air raids on village mosque in northern Syria. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights has said the raids were carried out by unidentified warplanes targeting a mosque in Aleppo province during evening prayers. Most of the casualties are civilians. The village is held by rebels and Islamic group, but no jihadist factions are present. The observatory also said rescue teams were on site trying to pull people from the rubble and dozen of residents were still unaccounted for.
On to sports news now. Australia looking to put up a mammoth score in the first innings of the day two of Ranchi Test. The visitors are in a formidable position after resuming the innings today with overnight score of 299 for four. Batting pair of Steve Smith and Glenn Maxwell continue to lead Australia's charge. Both matchmen scoring centuries in nearly 200 run unbroken fifth wicket partnership. After resuming his innings from 82 not out, Len Maxwell completed his maiden century today. Meanwhile, Indian captain Virat Kohli suffered shoulder injury while fielding on Thursday. Did not came out, come out to play on the second day. Well, that's it for now. Keep watching WhatsApp TV for more.